Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got a review on the Viafo A119S. Now throughout this review I am going to be comparing it to the A119 which I reviewed just several weeks ago. So if you haven't seen that review I recommend checking it out. I'll post a link to that review down below in the description. Now this camera was sent to me for review again by blackboxmycar.com so I'd like to thank them for sending this review unit out and of course my review is going to be as unbiased as possible. Now this camera is only going to have 1080p 60 so there's no 1440p 30 mode but there's a reason why they chose to do that and we'll talk about that a little later. So from the box most of it is pretty much the same a lot of the same specs list on the side there is a CPL adapter which I do have and will show so another main difference is this has a 135 degree view angle. The original A119 had a 160 degree angle. So looking at it you can see it's pretty much the same. Now the main difference is going to be the lens and I'll show a direct comparison of the A119. But all of the ports and buttons are all the same on the camera so it's very familiar. The original A119 could actually rotate the lens left or right, but with this bigger lens, it cannot actually do that. So, just like the first one, it comes with a mini USB adapter, so this is how you power it in your car. A data cable. This comes with the same GPS mount as the original one. So those pins connect the camera when you mount it to your windshield and that provides the GPS. While I do like that they provide the GPS with all of them, I don't really like how far it sticks off the windshield with it on. Now there's actually two separate non-GPS mounts. The A119 only came with this first one, but the second one is thicker and you're going to need the thicker one if you want to use the CPL adapter and don't want to use the GPS mount. Because the CPL adapter fits over the front of the lens, you're going to need that extra gap between the windshield and the camera to fit the lens. It's nice that it came with separate mounts though like this because it gives you several different options for what you want to use. We got an extra adhesive and string for removing the mounts. And of course we got the usual cable clips to help hide the cables. We got a small book. It's not nothing too in depth, but it covers what you need to know. So here's the two different versions. Like I said, they look so similar, you wouldn't really notice unless you look at the lens. They have the same mount with a GPS adapter. Now here you can see on the left is the A119S. So this A119 can rotate the lens left or right. I suppose that could benefit some people, but personally I don't think I would ever need to do that. I would prefer to always point straight ahead. Here is the CPL adapter. Now this just clips right on over the lens like this. And that will block a lot of reflections in your windshield. So it's pretty helpful on really sunny days or if you got a big dashboard or black dashboard. Here you can see my hand is putting a receipt on my dashboard and you can barely make out my hand. But when you take the CPL adapter off, you'll see how much more visible my hand is. Also, you can notice that the white receipt is quite a bit more visible. So the point of this is when you're driving around, especially when it's sunny, it should give you a noticeably more clear picture. So that option is available for purchase separate. And if you do have the original A119, you can get this also. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to tilt the lens left or right with that on there, but it's nice that they were able to make a solution that fits both models and the A118C2. So now, just like the original, the GPS mount has a plug-in on the top or you can plug it in on the side. So with the GPS mount the convenient thing is the cable goes straight up and that way you can have it go right up into your headboard but if you don't use that mount and you have to plug it in on the side 
then it's going to be sticking out the side and the cable is going to be more noticeable. So here you can see both A119 models and the new A118C2 model. They all have that great, stealthy, discreet wedge design, which I really love. To the left of them, inside the car, is my Thinkware F770, which uses a similar wedge design. I think all, all of these camera models have a very good form factor. So let's take a look at some footage. Now you'll see on the bottom it'll say A119S or A119. Now when comparing the day footage, it doesn't seem like it makes much of a difference. Now right there you can see I transitioned to the A119 and it looks brighter and at first it actually looks more detailed but when you really examine some freeze frames or look closely, you're not actually getting any more detail. The default brightness on the A119 seems to be up a little bit higher than the A119S, but you can change the exposure level on both cameras. This is going to be more important in the night footage as you'll see later, but I wanted to make sure to show the difference with the default settings during the day also. Both of them handle going through dark areas pretty well. This is with wide dynamic range on. So here you can see a similar shot where the amount of detail is about the same, but the A119S on the right does look darker. So if that's something that bothers you, you can try turning the exposure up a little bit. And maybe YouTube's not going to show it as well as the raw footage when I was taking freeze frames, but I was looking very closely at little things like blades of grass, and it looked like the same amount of detail. Now again, night footage is going to be where you see the biggest difference. So here you can see this is the S model, and I believe from driving this myself, I think the color and the lighting seems very lifelike. This seems really what it was like driving through this portion of the city in real life. Now when we switch to the original model, it's a lot more yellow and it looks a lot brighter at first. And to a first glance you might think that's better, but besides the fact that to me the color's way off, you'll see coming up that it's not actually clearer. So I will show a comparison of some of these signs coming up in a second. But that sign as you pass over it looks like it's a lot darker, but now when we pause it, I think it is quite noticeable that the signs up above, especially the 5th Avenue sign, does look a lot more defined on the A119S. So besides the color looking a lot more accurate on the Sony sensor version, it does seem like it captures that quick motion at night better than the original model. And if you look off to the far right, the original model does have a 160 degree field of view lens where the Sony sensor or the S version only has 135 degree field of view which is more in line with a lot of what uh, a lot of dash cam enthusiasts prefer around 130 at most typically it seems like and it is going to be noticeable on some shots so of course there is a trade-off. The original model had the 1440p mode, but that only went to 30 frames a second. A lot of people would prefer 1080p 60 over the 1440p 30, and that's really up to your own personal tastes. But I think I would actually prefer the A119S with the better night vision and the 135 degree field of view. Now coming up ahead you'll see the default brightness, like I said, is noticeably darker on the A119. And that might be something you want to turn up on the exposure level. If you watch on the far right, there is a bicyclist on the right side of the road. And he's sort of hard to see with the A119S. But now when we watch it with the A119, he's a lot more visible there, I thought. But again, that's something you could just change with your exposure settings a little bit. Now, this other comparison I have with a city street well lit, it's so similar that this was the first direct comparison I did, 
and I was thinking there's no difference at all or no practical difference. I think the first comparison I showed with the 5th Avenue sign on the freeway was a lot more noticeable, but when it's well lit like this, you, you can look at the cars in the parking lot, it's so hard to notice a difference that it's negligible at that point. Now I did want to show one more comparison, and this is going to demonstrate the field of view. So like I said, the A119 had a 160 degree field of view lens, where the S model has a 135 degree field of view, which a lot of dash cam enthusiasts prefer around that range, around 130 to 140 at most, because once you hit 150 or 160 or 70, you start to get a fisheye effect. And you can see down on the bottom, the A119, if you look at the building on the right, the vertical columns look like they're curving, where on the top, the vertical columns go a lot more straight. So there's far less fisheye effect on the A119S. And a lot of people will appreciate that because with less distortion, it's going to be easier to read license plates better. So when it comes down to it, they're so similar, it's really hard to say which one to buy. Now the A119S is $20 more for the suggested price or the retail price. And some people might not think that it's worth it. With the original one, you get the little swiveling uh, lens and you get the 1440p mode, which is higher resolution, so some people might take that as a better thing, but a lot of people are only going to be using the 1080p60 anyways. And while a lot of people might watch this footage and think it's negligible difference, I do, in my opinion, believe that with the S version's Sony sensor that there is a noticeable difference at night. And that example I showed where you could see the highway sign more well defined, I think is, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's a significant benefit, but it does make a difference. And I know some people are looking for better video quality at night. So that's something to really consider. But if you just want to save $20 and get the original model, there's nothing wrong with that. The original model is still a great camera and it does have that 1440p mode. So unless you really want slightly better night quality, then you might be better off just getting the original model. Now one last thing I wanted to talk about, because this was brought up in my original A119 review, and that's the parking mode. Now, there is a motion sensor with both of these cameras, and when I tested it, I couldn't get it to stop recording. Like, it was like every little tiny shadow or leaf or whatever would set it off. And I was trying to see how fast it would react, but something kept always setting it off, so it was always recording. And I've heard some people tell me that they leave the motion sensor on and use it as a parking mode. So if, if you hardwire it with something like a PowerMagic Pro or the Vico Power Plus, you can have it recording, and that way if someone uh, bumps your car in a parking lot, you'll capture that. But I do want to point out that Viafo recommends not leaving it in the motion sensing mode while driving. I've heard people, multiple people, <laughs> keep telling me that it works just fine when they drive, but I don't want to recommend that because the manufacturer themselves doesn't recommend it. So you can do it, but do it at your own risk. Now the reason why they don't recommend it is a couple of reasons. Now supposedly the motion detection with this chipset doesn't run perfectly, so I assume that means in their own testing sometimes it skips a beat or fails or something and while you're driving around you might actually miss recordings. I haven't heard of that happening, but that's the claim and I don't really want to you know recommend it if someone's just gonna one day find out that it's been skipping recordings or something now the other reason is that if you just hardwire it with a dumb kit or when I say dumb I mean a simple hardwiring kit it's gonna just keep recording on and on 24 7 so you do need to get something like the a Vico Power Plus or if you're looking for something cheaper just a Power Magic Pro from Blackview. Those can set a timer so after two, four, six, or 
even 24 hours or more, it'll cut the power to the camera so that way you're not just draining your car battery all the time. And that can also allow the camera to shut down and reboot, which any electronic you want to have that happen once in a while. So if you do decide to uh, use the motion detection as a parking mode, get something like the PowerMagic Pro. I think it will be very beneficial. Now some people, multiple people have told me that you know motion detection is a parking mode and I'll be honest, a lot of times I don't consider that parking mode. What I consider parking mode is an automatic parking mode like what Thinkware, Blackview, or Lucas does where those cameras know when you're driving and they know when you're parked. So when you're driving it's recording in normal mode and then once you stop driving it actually switches to a completely different mode where it's only recording from the motion sensing or G-Shock but in the normal recording you know it's not using motion sensing so it's just continuous so I think there it's important to distinguish automatic parking mode versus something like this that just has the motion sensing so you can of course use use it for parking but it's not going to be as full featured as something like the Thinkware or Blackview so that's pretty much all I got for this review. I hope I covered as much as I could. Uh, there's always questions that people have, so comment down below if you have any other questions. I try to keep these videos below 20 minutes now because I know from uh, my statistics people don't watch beyond 20 minutes very often. So I hope this video was helpful. If you're interested in this camera or any of the other Viafo cameras, check the link down below. I'll provide a couple different purchasing links and of course my review to the original A119. And if you're not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Definitely helps keep me motivated to keep doing these reviews. As usual, drive safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.